uh, is a really good example because if you walked into the classroom before I erased it, you looked at this and you're like, holy crap, there was like a lot of work that you just had on the board. Like, how are we going to do a problem like that? So the first thing, guys, is, hey, I'm just like you. I don't want to do as much work unless I have to, right? So when I'm looking at a problem like this, the first thing I want to do is, hey, all right, if they're telling me it's a factor, that means it's divisible and I'm going to have a remainder of zero, right? And that's good information to know. So the first thing I would want to do is, well, let's do synthetic division to find the other factor. But then I look at my factor and I say, that is not something I want to do synthetic division with. You can, and it's not, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just not something I'd really prefer to do. So what we need to do is then understand our information about factors and zeros. If we know square roots or irrational terms are plus or minus, what do we know about i? What is, how does i relate to irrational numbers? Square, square root of negative 1. So we know that if negative i exists, positive i exists. So that means if, oh, right there, if x minus 2 minus i is a factor, that means x minus 2 plus i is a factor. Cool. I got two zeros down, right? How many zeros am I supposed to have total? Four. Four. Okay, cool. Well, I just found two, and that wasn't that bad, right? I could s easily just set those equal to like zero and or set them equal to zero and solve. But um, if I want to do that, I don't. I got to multiply these out. So, based on your what we did on the quiz, remember we got to multiply these out. And a lot of you guys are like, oh, I hate this. So I'll just use the box method, um, even though you guys could use that. Uh, you guys could use my shortcut that I showed you. But yes, you weren't here, so that's OK. Um, but remember the shortcut where you do difference of two squares? That I showed it last class period. But anyways, you have just multiply this out. I'm going to do this really quickly, because I don't want to save time. And I already know the pattern that exists every single time I do this. Thank you. So we know that those add to 0, those add to 0. Um, this is, that's a positive. These add to 0. These do not add 0. Those add to negative 4x. So I get x squared minus 4x. i squared is negative 1. Negative negative 1 is positive 1. Positive 1 plus 4 is 5. So if this is a factor and this is a factor, that means their product, in this case, is a Factor, right? So that means I can now do long division with that. Do you guys agree? And we'll do long division of x to the fourth plus 2x cubed minus 17x squared plus 22 plus 10. Do you always have to have three numbers for that to work? No, you could do 2 by 3 or 2 by 6 or 1 by 2. It's just length times width. So yeah, it doesn't matter how big they are or how small. You just create the number of grids and columns accordingly. Um, so now, we can't do synthetic division here because obviously it's not, uh, it's not linear, right? So long division, x squared divides into x to the fourth, x squared times. See all you guys that missed lo long division last class period? Look at all the practice you're getting. X, now, but again, you've got to multiply x squared times everything, right? So x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. x squared times negative 4x is going to be a <clears throat> negative 4x cubed. x squared times 5 is going to be a positive 5x squared. Put them in parentheses and subtract. You get 0. This becomes a 6x cubed. Just be careful. You're subtracting a negative. So that's why one of the things I didn't tell you you weren't here for, put them in parentheses and subtract on the outside. Everybody, somebody in this class is going to make a mistake. Probably not somebody, some, some many people. So therefore, then 17x minus 5x is going to be a negative 20, 22. Okay, then you start everything all over again. x squared goes into 6x squared plus 6, I'm sorry, 6x squared times. 6x squared times x squared, no, sorry, 6x times. 6x times 6x squared is 6x cubed. 6x times negative 4 is going to be a negative 24x squared. And 6x times 5 is going to be a positive 30x. Oh, there's an x right there. Subtract the rows. That goes to 0. This goes to 2x squared. <clears throat> and then uh, you bring that down. That goes to a negative 8x. 
do this all over again. 8x squared times goes into 2x squared, positive 2 x, or positive 2 times. 2 times x squared is like 2x squared. 2 times negative 4x is a negative 8x. 2 times 5 is a positive 10. Oh, wait a minute. So that means that's a 0. So that means this has to also be a factor. So now I set this equal to 0, and I factor and solve. But, oh, crap. Really? Seriously? It's not factorable. Ah, so we know these two zeros, that's fine. So hopefully you guys are going to get really good at saying, OK, well, let's figure this one out real quick. b squared, which is 36, minus 4 times a, which is 1 times c, which is going to be minus 8, all over 2 times a, which is 2. I'm trying to save some work and some time. I'm not doing this step by step anymore. But if you need step by step, come and see me. Negative 30, or 36 minus 8 is 28. Can we simplify the square root of 28? Can we simplify that? Sure. 4 times 7, 2 radical 7. So we have negative 6 plus or minus 4 radical 7 over 2. And remember, guys, that 2 divides into both of those. Huh? It was 2 radical 7. Thank you. So x equals negative 6 over 2 plus or minus 2 radical 7 over 2. So x equals negative 3 plus or minus radical 7. So if I want to write my zeros, I'll put it back up here. Zeros is going to be negative 3 plus or minus radical 7, comma, x plus 2 plus or minus i. Right? Because if you were to set these equal to 0, you'd have to add and subtract the i's and then add 2. So that's why it's plus 2 plus or minus i. It's a lot of problem, guys. It's a big problem. But again, the purpose of this problem is not